my god so you read the title obviously we need to talk about baby reindeer because not only is this show incredibly entertaining incredibly thought-provoking and just really tragic it was made for discourse Everyone who watched this show took at least a few glaring themes or concepts or ideas away from this as the creator, I'm assuming, intended for it to convey. I just need to talk, I just need to talk about it. Let's talk about it. <laughs> so there are some themes that stood out to me that were the most glaring. The first one is just radical empathy and kindness being dangerous potentially. I want to talk about the multiple crises he was going through, the, the masculinity crisis, the sexuality and identity crisis, as well as his security crisis. I want to call it insecurity, but I'm just going to say security as a whole. The willingness to sacrifice one's well-being to pursue their dreams for the false idea of success or even just a chance at success. I want to talk about what I loved about this show. One of the things being that the creator really fully fleshed out all of his characters. And this show isn't a show about what's black and white, right and wrong as it relates to his actions and the way that he responded. But the fact that everything lives in the gray, everything is completely nuanced. And we saw that through the last couple episodes where you're like, oh my God, why would you do that? Because everything is in the gray. Nobody can handle something perfectly. The police can't even tell this man how to protect himself in a perfect black and white way, you know? I want to talk about something that stood out to me, my frustration with how the police were handling this and probably how they handle a lot, a lot of stalker situations. And then I want to talk about the takeaway from this that I find to be why so many people gravitate towards this because there's so much humanity in this. Just going to be honest, I was not going to watch the show. I thought maybe the title was a bit too trying to be quirky. I thought it was going to be one of those like very Netflixy thrillers. But I heard from a bunch of different podcasts that I listened to that people that were just in unrelated fields all really liked it and were recommending it. And I was like, what the heck is going on here had to watch it and it just was such a powerful show so beautifully crafted and the humor of it i think is what makes it so digestible and what makes it add a little bit of humanity to the tragedy the show kind of starts off with a kind gesture and then ends with that same exact kind gesture i feel like a lot of people like this show because the humanity that is reflected back at us is really kind of drawing to see. Not to say that we all have been in relatable instances with a stalker, you know, but it is just so human to feel sorry for someone to the point where you do things that are out of character for yourself. Arguably one of the most difficult things to watch about the way that Danny interacts with Martha or just kind of anyone is just his inability to establish a boundary, to obtain a boundary, to kind of take care of his own well-being because he has such radical empathy and such, he just is trying to be as kind as he can to this person that he feels bad for. I think what kind of drives the kind gesture is in the next point that I'm going to make, which is talking about his multiple crises that he's in. He's in a masculinity crisis. He talks about this in, he talked about this in an interview that he did. He was talking about how his own idea of masculinity was really put into question while he was going through this, which makes a lot of sense, which also leads into his, his sexual slash and identity crisis. I, it's really hard because I want to link masculinity to sexuality because that they have so many similar themes and then his security crisis i think really really drives why he does what he does first his masculinity crisis he talked about this in an interview that i cannot remember where i found but i'm going to include all of the things that i'm referencing down below sometimes i say that and i forget to do it but i actually did it ahead of time so you would know where to go throughout pretty much the whole entire time you watch this and you think, ask for help, like reach out, do something. But you also know a personality like his and then also being a man, probably in the way that he was thinking about how a man presents, it's probably much harder for him to even say the words out loud, to say, 
I was sexually assaulted. Because when a man steps forward and says, says, I'm sexually assaulted, the first thing that I think is brought up is like, how, you know, it's not met with, it's not immediately met with empathy the way that a woman would be. I'm not saying that that is every single case. Okay, there's so many nuances, but I'm just saying in this instance, as it relates to masculinity, there's so many things that he goes through, like not something as extreme as sexual assault, but something like having his career like a lot of men are really respected off of kind of traditional silly little things like being a provider being confident being (laughs) attractive but he is insecure not small but kind of smaller failing comedian so i think in a lot of ways he didn't really view himself as like a man to be proud of so he wasn't really secure in the way that he was which is why he kind of let Martha into his life to tell him, no, you're so this, you're, nobody should let you have a bone structure like that. Martha kind of filled his ability to be seen as a man. Sexual identity crisis, that was very interesting. That was very interesting for him to show and for him to talk about. All of his voiceovers talking about how he started experimenting, experimenting, I don't even know if that's the proper wording, having experiences that he wouldn't have had without the assault. And it was like we were listening to him read pages out of his journal when he was talking about that. At the root of all of these crises is Martha and probably is the reason why he didn't go to the police for so long. His security issue, his inability to be secure in who he is, his inability to be secure in his abilities, his insecurity about being viewed as the person that he would like to be, the person that he knows he can be, is why Martha was able to do so much damage. And that's so sad because there's so many people who need other people to persuade them that they are secure, that they are worth something. A large part of the story was in the fact that he was kind of a failing comedian. I don't even know if I should call it a failing comedian because he's just, you know, the comedian just trying to grow. But what informs his actions is the inability to feel secure. What informs the predator who's preying on him and grooming him is his ability to read the fact that this man is not secure, this man needs me this man wants me this man's career is going to grow with me grow with me i hope it made everybody sick that idea that somebody was able to prey on somebody who was just trying to make their dreams happen and then for so much psychological mental physical damage to be done for him when you work so hard i can't imagine what it was like to be in his position but when you work so hard and you endure so much just embarrassment time and you have so much patience just waiting for your dream to happen you'll let a lot of things happen and you'll probably let it's you can just see how easy it was for him to be groomed and it's actually really sad you could see that his willingness in order to just even have a chance to pursue his dreams led him into that and then for the rest of his life he's just gonna have to deal with that all because he believed in the fact that somebody believed in him he probably felt like oh i'll just endure a little bit more until my just my dreams come true i almost want to cry about it because knowing that it happened in real life is just really tough and knowing that it it happens in real life knowing that it has happened will happen is currently happening Ugh, I'm so happy that he had the strength and ability to tell his story in such an authentic way because the show was lightly fictionalized. But no one should be left with that. Nobody should be left with that. But what I loved about this show was the ability for everybody to be fully seen as people who live in a gray area. We're looking at Donnie's perspective because he's the main character. But also we're seeing Martha in so many situations that you can't help but feel bad for her. She is the villain, I guess, is the antagonist of this. But we also see her in a place that looks like garbage. She lives in a garbage place. And I know we constantly hear the cliche, hurt people, hurt people. How can you love someone else when you don't even love yourself? But like, really, how can this person who lives in an absolute garbage can, who has neglected her place, 
who probably doesn't have a job, who probably is doing so much harm to herself on top of other people, you you can't help but recognize this is a human being who has had who was just too damaged to see the fact that her abuse is abuse like i just feel like we've seen so many shows where oh we see stalker stalker bad stalker is not human stalker is completely aware of all their actions for this show to just see a person like martha and for us to see her feeling sad i feel like I wanted initially to label this as a show being about a wolf in sheep, sheep, sheep's clothing, but honestly, this is an incredibly psychologically damaged person that I love that we're seeing all the sides of. I'm not rooting for her. I'm not, of course, thinking about her in any way that's positive, but the empathy that Donnie had, you can see in those moments as to why he felt bad for her and why he would do the naturally kind things that he did do for her because we see her as somebody not who's like normal but somebody who is extremely messed up even when you want to yell at the screen and be like why would you ever fantasize about that you know why would you ever like come within five feet of her why would you ever contact her after she's done all of this to you you recognize this is just a human being trying to live out his experience in the best way that he can i feel like because this follows real life he couldn't help but just to write the human flaws that he had and it wasn't just a oh i know this girl's weird oh she's talking to me too much i'm gonna report her to the police oh that's the end of the story i'm ending up with with terry no it was I'm being stalked. I don't understand why this is happening. I'm going to try to do what I can for her because I feel bad for her and she clearly needs help. But it's not like a hero story. It's not like, a oh, I'm doing as much as I can for her because I, I love her and I care about humanity. It's like, I'm doing this because I'm giving into the parts of me that are really, that fall victim to cycle of abuse. You know? Ugh. I love that they put Terry's character in with Donnie. And especially because I think you kind of start to not trust Donnie so much when we see him lying to Terry because you're like, why Why would you lie to her? Why would you lie to her? That doesn't make any sense. She's trying to do the best she can for you. She's just a normal person just coming to you. And you're out here just messing it up, lying about your name and profession. What the heck? And then you just realize, no, this is just somebody who, as much as you're rooting for him, you're also realizing he's just a flawed human being who's susceptible to stalking, but he's a normal person who lies, who has issues, who's not the hero of the story. Another thing that I love about this was just that, and this is gonna, I hope this does not sound like I'm painting this as like a, see, bad things can happen to you and you too can come out of them just as strong. You know, I hate when people do that when they're like, just because bad things happen to you doesn't mean that they define you. Like, get over it. You know what I mean? I, I hate that so much because it just is very black and white. The gray of this is that I find so much value in the gray of the situation is that he has so much strength for being able to take something like this and turn it into a valuable piece of art that he can share with people that can potentially heal from this. And I'm not saying that he probably made this to, for other people to heal, but to create something that gives people entertainment, that gives people joy, that gives people a mirror is just so incredibly awe-worthy. Something that stood out to me about this was the frustration that I felt when I watched. The difficulty in communicating to the police is something that I think a lot of people can understand because it is difficult going to authority figures and it's even difficult going to like doctors and explaining, hey, this is what I think is happening and this is what I need because they don't tell you how to advocate for yourself. You just show up to a police station and describe the situation that's at hand and then hope you can get some sort of solution from something and just hope that they get you and that they advocate for you and then sometimes it just turns out being incredibly damaging and potentially traumatizing in this situation it's like annoying as an audience member knowing what Danny's going through and being like tell him about the fact that Martha's God is Martha's God tell him about she threw glass in your face and now you have glass like don't let people talk you out of that but it's like we no matter what nation you're in should all have classes in how to talk to the police. 
and how to advocate for yourself and how to submit cases of stalking, domestic violence, um, an accident. But no, we take ourselves to police stations and say, hey, this thing happened to me. I don't really know what to do with it. Can you help me? And sometimes they'll just straight up be like, no, we can't. And you're like, what the heck are my options? And they're like, we don't got any. And you're like, what the, what is this about? <laughs> what the heck? Like, I felt so bad for Donnie because you just, I caught myself being like, he should tell them about this and this and this and this. But the thing is the police should have some sort of advocate or person that can help you get out of your situation because this is a man that has been stalked who's had in same psychological damage who does not know how to advocate for a situation who probably hasn't fully processed his situation and he's expected to kind of just give this convincing report to like this uh, policeman and to convince them that they should do something about it i just can't imagine going to the police station and just being in that moment that he's in not knowing what the heck to say knowing that you are suffering all the time and just being like, where are the words for this? Because if I had the words for this, if I had the ability to advocate for myself, if I had the knowledge, if I had the ability to put her away myself, I would. But I need you to listen to me so that I can help myself. Help me help myself. It's incredibly interesting, his obsession with Martha's obsession with him at the very end. But I I honestly do understand how we could have gotten into that kind of a wormhole because when something bad happens to you or when you have a bad relationship with somebody or and this is me literally speaking out of my butt i don't know anything but i can imagine especially as a creative type you just probably have the curiosity and the desire to know the ins and outs of what the heck just happened to you so you probably obsess over every little detail to try to figure out who what where when and why and so i do think it was very interesting that he included that knowing that probably a lot of people be really confused about why the heck it happened because you're probably thinking ew you're over this just you know process it and move on but no the processing for certain people and their traumas is incredibly different on everyone but i do really like that he included that in the end because he probably went through that process created his play and then you know now we have this netflix show this is just amazing this was incredibly inspiring dare i say at the very beginning at the fourth month of the year this is the best show of the year let me know what you thought let me know what your favorite theme was let me know anything that you think about this any little thing i'll take literally anything <laughs> wherever you are whoever you are whatever time of day it is i hope you have a good morning afternoon or night